the gravitational force due to a semicircle. A uniform wire with mass M and length capital L is bent into a semicircle. Find the magnitude and direction of the gravitational force this wire exerts on a point with mass M placed at the center of curvature of the semicircle. So this uniform wire has mass capital M, length capital L, uh, and our um, object with mass M, the particle, is located at the center. So I note that the mass of the semicircular wire is capital M, length is capital L, and therefore it is related to its radius, the radius of curvature I call R, 2 pi R, if it was a full circle, but it's half a circle, 2 pi R divided by 2, therefore the radius of curvature is the length L divided by pi. So if I, this is a continuous mass distribution. So if I consider this angle theta with respect to the x-axis, and if I look at an angular separation d theta, the arc length is r d theta. So I'm going to find the mass contained in this part of the segment, in this segment, which is dm. So how do I find this dm? That dm is the mass density lambda multiplied by the arc length ds. So it is lambda times the arc length, which is capital R d theta. Uh, and what is the mass density? Because it's a uniform wire, it's the total mass divided by the total length, capital M over L. So it's a uniform wire, uniform mass distribution. So I find that dm, the mass of this segment, uh, differential segment, is the mass density, capital M over capital L, multiplied by ds, which is r d theta, where all r is the total length divided by pi d theta. Uh, so therefore, the l's will cancel, and I will find that the mass element here has a mass m d theta over pi. All right. Now, this is going to apply a force on this particle with mass m, which has an x component and y component, let's say. So let's concentrate on the y component of the gravitational force first. So dfy due to this dm, mass element dm, will be gravitational constant g m dm divided by the distance between them squared, the radial distance. What is the distance between m and the um, differential mass element? It is capital R, the radius of curvature. So this is r squared. And because I'm considering the y component, and this is making an angle theta with respect to the x-axis, which is greater than 90 degrees, this is theta minus 90 is this angle, which is what I'm going to use to calculate the projection onto the y-axis. So I'm going to get for this force y component uh, a factor of cosine of theta minus 90 degrees. Okay, so once again, this angle here is theta minus 90 degrees. So this angle here is 90 degrees. All right, and if I look at the x component of the force, dfx, now dfx will point in minus i hat direction. This is an attractive force, you see, because the force is actually has actually this radial uh, pro, uh, direction uh, towards the mass element. So dfx will be minus, because of this uh, minus i hat direction, uh, the gravitational constant g m d capital m, the mass element, divided by r square. 
This time I I'm taking the projection onto the x-axis, sine of theta minus 90, but it's in the negative direction. So this is sine of theta minus 90 in minus i hat direction. Now, if I perform the integration for the y component of the force, integral dfy, all the y components will add up from all such mass elements. I will be integrating over which angles. So I start with theta is equal to 90 degrees. I end with theta is equal to 270 degrees. That is right here. So that's the end point. Uh, so I'm, I will have the limits 90 degrees to 270 degrees for this integration. And I have G M uh, capital M over pi R square is capital L over pi parentheses squared uh, sine theta d theta. Why? Because what I had here was cosine of theta minus 90 degrees. Cosine is an even function. So this is cosine of 90 minus theta, which is nothing but sine theta. So I've substituted sine theta for cosine of theta minus 90. For dm, I substituted m d theta over pi, m d theta over pi. For r, I substituted l over pi. And if I perform the integration, the integral of sine theta d theta gives me a minus sign here, minus g minus g pi m capital M divided by L squared cosine theta. Uh, that will be evaluated between 90 degrees and 270 degrees. The derivative of cosine is minus sine. So therefore, the integral of sine d theta, sine theta d theta is minus cosine theta. And cosine 270 and cosine 90 uh, will give me uh, zero. So I will find that Fy is equal to zero. Now this result is not surprising. I could have uh, obtained the same result just saying this is due to symmetry. You can see here a mass element here produces a a force on the y-axis in plus j hat direction, a symmetric mass element here will produce a y component in minus j hat direction, so they will be cancelling in pairs. So symmetric mass elements will create y components that will be cancelling in pairs. Therefore, I obtain net zero y component of the gravitational force on this particle with mass m. As for the x component, f sub x, I have integral d f x, they are all adding up. This is minus the integral from 90 degrees to 270 degrees. g m capital M pi capital L over pi squared, the same thing I did in d f y. And now this time I have minus cosine theta d theta. Why do I have minus cosine theta? Because sine of theta minus 90 degrees, sine is an odd function, is minus sine of 90 degrees minus theta, which is minus cosine of theta. So that's what I used. And uh, so basically, I have substituted for sine of theta minus 90 minus cosine theta. Uh, again, for R, I substituted L over pi. For dm, I substituted md theta over pi. And when I perform this integration, the minus signs cancel. So this is going to become a plus. Uh, integral of cosine gives me a sign. So I will have uh, g pi m capital m divided by capital l square sine theta 
which will be evaluated between uh, 90 degrees and 270 degrees. So this will give me g pi m capital M over L square. Uh, and I evaluate it at 270 degrees. Sine of 270 is minus 1. Sine of 90 is 1. So this is sine of 270 minus sine of 90. So minus minus 1 gives me minus 2. Therefore, I obtain fx, f sub x is equal to minus uh, 2g pi m capital M divided by L square, where the minus sign indicates the direction of this force is minus i hat direction. So this gives me the magnitude and the direction as well. So we were asked to find the uh, magnitude and direction of the gravitational force this wire exerts on this point mass. And that's that we, direction is minus I hat. It's pointing towards the uh, from the center towards the midpoint of the semicircle. And uh, it has a magnitude 2g pi m capital M divided by L squared. So once again, this is a continuous mass distribution. I've considered a small mass element with mass dm. Uh, it's, it, its mass is equal to mass density by multiplied by the arc length, which is R, capital R d theta, where capital R is related to the total length of the semicircular wire. Uh, total length is 2 pi R divided by 2, so R is L over pi. And dm is lambda ds, where lambda for the uniform wire is mass divided by the length in the one-dimensional case. So m over L multiplied by a ds, which is r d theta, l over pi d theta, gives me m d theta over pi. For the y component of the force, I have to consider the angle between this uh, radial uh, vector between the uh, point mass and the differential mass. Uh, it makes an angle a theta minus 90 degrees with respect to the vertical axis, because I've called this angle to be theta. And therefore, I see that this is cosine of theta minus 90. This projection will give me minus sine of theta minus 90 because it's on the minus uh, I hat direction. Okay, so G, product of the masses divided by radial distance squared, which is radius squared, cosine theta minus 90 for Y component, minus sine theta minus 90 for the X component. Integrating this for the y component between angles theta equals 90 to theta equals 270 I obtain uh, integral of sine theta d theta because cosine of theta minus 90 is cosine of 90 minus theta which is sine theta uh, that is cosine minus cosine theta uh, and cosine of 270 and cosine of 90 are uh, zero so this gives me a zero force which can also be seen by symmetry. If you take a symmetric mass element here, it will have a negative uh, y component, which will be canceling this one with the same uh, distance uh, here. So we will see uh, they will be canceling in pairs. Due to symmetry, the y component will be zero. The x component involves the integral of sine of theta minus 90. Since sine is an odd function, this is minus sine of 90 minus theta, which is minus cosine theta. Integral of cosine theta d theta gives me uh, basically sine theta. And sine theta evaluates that 270 degrees is minus 1, at 90 is 1, so minus 1 minus 1 gives me minus 2 and I obtain a force minus 2 g pi m capital M divided by L square where the minus sign indicates the direction pointing towards the midpoint of the semicircular wire in the minus I hat direction.